After numerous delays, Blue Origin's determination to launch New Glenn was evident. The debut flight began with great success, reaching orbit and deploying the payload. However, the outcome took a drastic turn when the booster landing attempt failed. While the launch was a triumph, the booster's status quickly became unknown, and it was later confirmed to have been lost. This outcome, though disappointing, was not entirely unexpected. Landing a booster on a drone ship on its first flight is an extraordinarily challenging feat. But the question still lingers, what exactly went wrong? Recently, a detailed analysis has provided a plausible explanation for the failure. According to the findings, the booster failed to execute a successful landing burn, which impacted both deceleration and navigation. As a result, the booster collided with the ocean at high speed. This breakdown likely involved multiple systems, including the engine, the control system, and operational procedures during landing. Let's start with the engines. The seven BE-4 engines performed admirably during the initial phase of the flight, helping to propel the rocket into space. However, toward the end of the mission, they failed to deliver the necessary performance. Some engines may have been damaged due to high temperatures and pressures, a common risk for complex systems like the BE-4, which features an intricate upper stage with many delicate components. Given the stress placed on these engines, this failure wasn't entirely surprising. Next, the control system may have been at fault. It's possible that the connection was poorly established, preventing the landing burn command from being properly executed. Some speculate that this miscommunication caused the BE-4's landing burn to be 15 seconds shorter than planned, a crucial loss that would have severely affected deceleration and hindered the booster's ability to slow down in time for a safe landing. The landing operation itself could have also been impacted by a series of strong flip maneuvers that occurred during and after booster separation. These aggressive movements may have subjected the internal systems to damaging collisions, either between hardware components or between hardware and fuel, a phenomenon known as fuel sloshing. In such a scenario, the integrity of the fuel tanks and lines is crucial. A severe flip could have caused damage to these components, leading to fuel loss or even a mix-up potentially resulting in one fuel type, likely liquid oxygen, not being properly supplied, while an excess of methane could have reduced the efficiency of the turbines. Even more concerning are the potential failures within the turbine pump systems of some engines. If these pumps failed, it would explain the loss of landing thrust or even the complete shutdown of the engine. This would have prevented the booster from adjusting its thrust as required, leading to the rapid descent that resulted in the high-speed impact with the ocean. These failures highlight the significant risks involved in attempting to land a rocket booster, especially on a first flight. For a vehicle designed to land, maintaining precise navigation and deceleration is essential to ensure a safe touchdown. In this case, Blue Origin is fortunate that the booster landed in the ocean rather than on a drone ship. If the navigation system had functioned properly and directed the booster on its intended path, a collision with the drone ship would have likely been catastrophic, potentially destroying the booster and severely damaging the landing system that took so much time and effort to develop. While this analysis provides an initial insight into the possible causes of the failure, we will need to wait for Blue Origin's official investigation to confirm these details. In the meantime, there is room for further speculation what other factors might have contributed to the booster's failure. Share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Additionally, what's your prediction for the second flight of New Glenn? When do you think Blue Origin will be ready to launch again? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest developments in the space race, including the progress of SpaceX and beyond. Whatever the reason behind the mishap, it's clear that Blue Origin has significant challenges ahead. First and foremost, they will need to work closely with the FAA to understand and resolve the issues surrounding the failed landing attempt. Immediately following the flight, the FAA issued a request for an investigation into the anomaly that occurred during Blue Origin's NG-1 mission launched from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on the 16th of January. The FAA's announcement confirmed that they were aware of the malfunction, but the exact cause remains unknown. This investigation will undoubtedly require extensive effort from Blue Origin's engineering team to resolve. One of the difficulties Blue Origin faces is the lack of clear observation angles for the New Glenn flight, especially compared to the detailed coverage often seen with SpaceX's Starship missions. Whether this is due to limited disclosures or other factors, it creates a more challenging environment for the company as they work to pinpoint the cause of the failure. 
This situation is likely to lead to delays in Blue Origin's overall timeline. In order to move forward, several steps must be taken. Blue Origin must first complete the investigation and announce their findings, which we all are eagerly awaiting. Following that, the company will need to implement corrective actions to ensure that the same issue doesn't occur again. The next critical step will be ensuring public safety, which in turn will impact their readiness for future flights. Hardware preparation delays also pose a serious risk to Blue Origin's upcoming missions. Particularly concerning is the new Glenn 2 mission, which is supposed to carry NASA's payload. As of now, there have been no public updates regarding the booster or the next-generation engine for new Glenn, and reports indicate that some parts of the upper stage failed during testing last year. Without swift improvements to these components, Blue Origin risks derailing the progress made during the first flight. The company must ensure that hardware preparation is handled efficiently, or they may face further delays, similar to those experienced before the launch of NG-1. Beyond hardware, Blue Origin must address issues with vehicle preparation before each mission. Recall that during their first attempt, there was a problem during the fuel loading process, which led to an aborted launch. If such issues persist, they could cause not only further delays, but also compromises to the efficiency of future launches. With so much riding on these future missions, Blue Origin will need to rethink their strategies moving forward. Setting an ambitious goal, like recovering the rocket on the first attempt, undoubtedly creates additional pressure. In upcoming flights, especially ones carrying critical payloads like NASA's, Blue Origin will need to master the liftoff process and ensure that everything goes smoothly. After proving their capability with high-stakes missions, they can then focus on the rocket recovery process for military payloads and Amazon satellite missions. Only when Blue Origin successfully navigates these essential tasks should they consider pushing further into the rocket recovery process. Maintaining focus on the fundamentals, namely safe and reliable launches, will be key to their future success. The future of Blue Origin remains uncertain, especially in light of the recent failure of their new Glenn Landing booster. With each misstep, Blue Origin continues to lag further behind SpaceX in the reusability race, a competition that SpaceX has not only led, but revolutionized with its Falcon rockets. Blue Origin's decision to attempt a drone ship landing on their first mission was undoubtedly a move to compete directly with SpaceX, which has dominated the reusability field. As of today, SpaceX has completed around 400 landings and reuses with its Falcon rockets, a staggering number considering the limited number of flights. This figure is expected to grow exponentially as launch frequency increases in the coming years, solidifying SpaceX's hold on the market and its reusability strategy. Falcon boosters continue to break records, with the B-1067 booster reaching 25 flights and the B-1080 booster achieving an extraordinary turnaround time of just 14 days between flights. Thanks to these capabilities, Falcon 9 rockets are able to launch at an unprecedented rate of up to two or three flights per day, facilitated by the extensive use of SpaceX's launch pads. This reusability not only makes SpaceX more efficient, but also offers a significant cost advantage allowing the company to stay competitive in the aerospace industry. The Falcon boosters have also perfected a variety of landing methods, including landing on a drone ship, a method that New Glenn aims to emulate. Since the first successful drone ship landing in 2016, SpaceX has achieved over 320 successful landings using this method alone. This track record underscores the strength and reliability of their reuse strategy, and highlights just how far ahead SpaceX is in the reusability race something that will take Blue Origin years to catch up to. Meanwhile, SpaceX is on the verge of a new milestone, true full reusability. The company has already recovered its Starship Super Heavy booster twice, utilizing the most challenging method possible, catching it in mid-air with the Mechazilla arm. This innovative technique is something that Blue Origin is not likely to even consider for several years, given their current trajectory. SpaceX's next big goal is to attempt to catch the Starship second stage itself, potentially as early as Flight 9. Once achieved, SpaceX will officially mark the beginning of full reusability, further cementing its lead in the space industry and setting it apart from all other players, including Blue Origin's new Glenn. While it is crucial for Blue Origin to remain competitive, the company may need to slow down and reassess its approach. With multiple technical issues still plaguing the new Glenn system, particularly the first stage, Blue Origin should focus on resolving these problems before rushing toward reusability. 
The company faces an uphill battle to reach reusability, and a hasty push to recover rockets without resolving fundamental issues could hinder their progress. This cautious approach is essential for Blue Origin's long-term success. Rushing ahead may divert attention from perfecting the second stage of the rocket and ensuring overall mission reliability. The pursuit of quick reusability could backfire, causing Blue Origin to fall even further behind SpaceX and potentially leave them vulnerable to smaller but nimble competitors like Rocket Lab. In fact, the aerospace industry is growing increasingly competitive, and Blue Origin is not the only company with eyes set on reusability. A hasty approach could allow smaller companies with more focused strategies to surpass Blue Origin, leaving them struggling to catch up. Blue Origin's decision-making in the coming months will be crucial to its future. The company must balance ambition with pragmatism, carefully addressing each challenge while advancing towards its long-term goals. If they fail to learn from past mistakes and focus on quality and reliability, they risk being overtaken not only by SpaceX, but by any other rising players in the field. Blue Origin's next steps are crucial. How they tackle the challenges ahead will determine whether they rise as a leader in space reusability or fall behind. The coming months hold immense potential, and their ability to adapt will be key to their future success. With perseverance, they can turn obstacles into opportunities and continue to reach for the stars. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thanks for tuning in, and keep looking up. The best is yet to come.